Cockerel. Um, my work is titled Portraits of Light. These are two acrylic paintings on canvas and in these paintings I was thinking about the fluidity of memory. These originate as abstract pieces and then also incorporating photographs from my childhood. Um, so the process I started with um, just a purely like abstract approach um, with just washes and um, painting very spontaneously just by um, focusing on the color palette and then letting the painting kind of decide um, the other factors. Um, so for the, the color palette I chose um, colors that to me really felt like nostalgic and felt like a fading memory. And then the process was just um, watery acrylic washes and glazing to create like a sense of a fleeting memory or like the cloudiness of um, kind of hazy memories. Um, and then after I had these abstract um, paintings, then I went through old photo albums from my childhood um, and then also kind of stumbled upon um, the photograph um, that I used for the painting on the left and I worked with these to bring in the elements of the photograph uh, by keeping the, the um, abstract elements that I had uh, from the beginning of the process um, and this was really an interesting process because spending time with these photographs um, and painting really um, spontaneously I was able to kind of work through the process of painting as a process of remembering. And um, I think I learned a lot from the photographs and then also my relationship with kind of the way that I remember things and um, was able to kind of connect with my memories in a really interesting way. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gwen Dietz. Um, for my VFA project, I wanted to focus on the global issue and theme of the struggles that women go through throughout their life growing up and the external and internal factors that affect them. Um, so for this project, I shot in film and it was a way to get my point across through symbolism and a fine art perspective rather than my usual medium of documentary photography that I shoot. And with this project, I worked with seven different subjects and these subjects all um, sat down with me and talked to me about their experiences throughout their life and everything that they had gone through that shaped them to be the person that they wanted to be. Um, 
So with each of these subjects, I asked them to wear a black bathing suit because it's neutral and black represents elegance and power. And each of them had a mirror to represent the identity that they're taking in throughout their environment. And um, yeah, it was a really rewarding experience, especially because being a woman myself and this idea of body image being a very big theme of my college career and what I had gone through. Um, but yes, so this is my project. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, if you're in town, come check it out until this Sunday. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sain Garma, and this is my series, Branching Paths. It's about the dissolution of the self and the ego, and it's about dissolving boundaries between uh, personal identity and the natural environment. Hello, my name is Hanning Shikawa and my uh, project is titled History Lessons at Lunchtime and it represents my personal journey of inner conflict and reconciliation with my Japanese American identity and growing up during a time when Japanese culture was gaining popularity in America um, I really learned to um, love Japan and Japanese culture and one of the things that I enjoyed as a kid was um, bento making and it was kind of like a way for me to um, connect with my cultural heritage and express my creativity. Um, but upon learning about Japan's um, history of war during the 19th and 20th centuries, I um, felt a inner conflict with my personal identity as a Japanese American. Um, since my parents um, did not possess the same sentiments toward Japan as I did, um, due to this history of war and aggression that took place during my grandparents' time. Um, learning about these um, generational differences in perspective made me feel really sad and frustrated. Um, but I soon realized that in order to confront these uncomfortable feelings I was facing, I needed to study and learn more about Japan's history and culture instead of focusing on the more superficial aspects of it. And so um, I, my work represents the tension for, between my love for Japan and the sadness I felt about the darker parts of its history, all of which I'm still processing today. And my project is a series of bento box dioramas, which represent my childhood love for Japanese culture, but also expose those difficult parts of Japanese history. And there are um, 10 bento boxes arranged in chronological order, and each bento represents an event in Japanese history before, during, and world, uh, before and during World War II. And in, de in depicting these events, I subvert the cute imagery often used in bento boxes by using it to depict violent events from the past. And this juxtaposition reveals my inner struggle to reconcile my feelings of appreciation and disappointment. Um, and in processing what everything that I've learned through this project, I realized that I can um, hold space for both respect and resentment, and that I can appreciate Japanese culture while also acknowledging the reality of Japan's complex history. Hi, my name is Sarah Jensri, and this is my project, Changes. It's about decay of man-made objects and the relationship that time and nature have on it. And so basically, I went around different areas of Oahu and I photograph things that I found. A big part of the way that I work is um, not necessarily set up shots, but found shots. And um, the inspiration for this project came from my childhood explorations of areas near my house that have been decayed and continue to decay over time. And yeah, I pretty much, I think in a perfect world, I would continue to come back to these spaces and photograph them, but um, time didn't permit that for this project. 
Hi, my name is Camilla Jensen, and this is my series, Angels Through Gesture. I grew up in California, but my family is from Denmark, so I've spent a lot of time between the US and Europe. Um, I've lived back and forth my whole life, and because of that, I've been very inspired by classical European art. Um, with this series, I really wanted to find a way to combine abstraction and realism to bring these pieces to a level where they can be appreciated in a new light from a 21st century perspective. So to do this, I combine the smooth realism of classical European art and thick texture gestural marks of modern day abstraction to make it more relatable for people today and find a new way to show the ideas of classical European art without keeping the original meaning behind them. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Eduardo Joaquin, and this is my work, Rites of Passage. Um, so this body of work um, revolves around rites of passage. It is structured around the writings of Arnold van Gennep, who is a seventh, late 17th century ethnographer. Um, so he divided up the um, rites of passage into three separate stages, separation, liminality, and reintegration. Um, so each of these panels speak to those phases, with the first being separation, where the individual is separated from their society to undergo some sort of rite or ritual. Liminality, where they undergo that rite or ritual. It's a transition phase between, two, between the two phases. Um, and reintegration, where they're brought back from the rite or ritual um, back into the community to sort of share the knowledge that they gained from it. Um, the work incorporates Philippine mythology, religion, spiritualism, and folklore. It allowed me to bridge tensions between my identity and my practice as a painter with a sort of Western academic background. Um, I see the work in its, as a rite of passage in itself. Um, it speaks to my own personal journey, but in doing so, I hope that I'm able to express a sort of universal story that the viewer can also resonate with. Sanderson, G U L A, pronounced as R A E. Uh, my the title of my work is uh, Home to Homeless. Uh, these are the body of work inspired um, by the homelessness in Hawaii. Um, I think the image, the reality of Hawaii is disguised uh, often by the uh, romanticized images uh, of travel industry. But the matter of fact is that um, Hawaii has uh, uh, one of the highest uh, per capita rate of homelessness in the nation. And Native Hawaiians are disproportionately uh, affected. So I use, uh, I dissecting um, Eugene Savage's uh, two murals, Annexation and Festival of the Sea, um, to contrast um, and reconstruct the reality of Hawaii that reflects the uh, struggle of uh, Native Hawaiians and the degradation of uh, Hawaii's environment and uh, ecology. Um, so I'm hoping with this body of work uh, to bring out more greater awareness of the, um, the fact, uh, historical fact, as well as the uh, environmental and ecology issues in Hawaii. Hello, my name is Danielle Kamalani Tushar, and this is my work, Ramblings of a Child. Um, so my work deals with uh, adulthood and the loss of childhood as you move into your adulthood. Um, so for this project, I really wanted to focus on those memories of being a child again, um, 
through the use of a domestic space. So for me, domestic spaces um, help me distinctly um, depict time. So rather, instead of age, I use the, the rooms I lived in. So for example, uh, childhood, teenage, um, adolescent, and then like right now. Um, starting off with something more like lively and uh, sort of representing childhood, moving into something a little bit less exciting as you get older, um, and then moving to something even more sad and blue, uh, fully losing your childhood and then ending off in a complete emptiness of color, uh, representing sort of the ending of childhood, moving into your adult life. Um, I want to use primary colors to reference childhood as well and keep it light and pastel to rep represent memories. Um, and for the last one, my 3D diorama, um, I kind of wanted it to represent a dollhouse of my studio space, which I've kind of turned into uh, the home away from home.